another episode of the house in Fata Morgana. So the last episode was possibly the craziest episode yet. So last time, um, the, let's see, um, Mikkel, uh, got the final key from, um, from Jacopo, unlocked the, the tower door, went up to the top, um, and found Morgana talking to herself as if she has, like, two different, like, personalities, um, and then she died shortly after that, um, and then Mikkel told Jacopo that he should still, like, confess his feelings to Morgana, even though she's dead, because he's, he says that, um, I think it is actually Michelle, but I've been pronouncing it Mikkel this whole time, so I'm not going to change. Well, how is it pronounced in French? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I've been... I mean, I think I've probably been pronouncing Jacopo wrong, too, so I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think like that swordsman guy is supposed to be Italian or something. He's some kind of. <laughs> anyway, um, so, um, so Jacopo. Um, confessed his feelings to the dead Morgana. Um, Mikkel was saying that like her soul would still hear her, hear him, so he confessed his feelings, and then he brought Morgana's body out of the church because they were gonna bury her or whatever. Um, but then as soon as he gets out of the church, he has, like, this, this illusion of, like, all these dead bodies and shit, and then he figures out that the whole time he's been in the past, it hasn't been real life. Like, it was all, a f like, pretty much a dream. So you you got to love how this visual novel like makes you go through like t read through like 10 hours of material and then in snap of your fingers goes oh by the way that was all fucking fake that none of that shit even happened got to love it man So, so now I think Mikkel is like supposed to be in the land of the dead, and he's going. Um, he said he was like going to try and visit Morgana, even though he thinks he's in like the 19th century or something, which is like 900 years after Morgana died. So I don't know why he's trying to find Morgana, but that's what he's doing. So. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, Matthias, um, I managed to get to the really hard part of Angel Voices and Beat Saber twice today. Like, the part that's like four and a half minutes into the song. Um, so at least now I can get to that part. Um, the 
pro the problem with that song is it just it, it kills my arms to play that song so I can only do it like a few I can only attempt it like a few times and then I have to quit because my arms are just fucked <laughs> so that's gonna severely hamper my ability to get past that song I don't know if I'm even gonna be able to do it honestly just cuz like if I if I was able to spend you know an hour plus practicing it each day like I do with other songs I could pr I could probably do it but I don't know because it just destroys my arms as fast as it does uh, I don't know I might try it a couple more days and then I might just move on to something else if even if I don't pass it <clears throat> Oh, by the way, I think I, hold on, let me fix the display, I think I, there, okay, there we go. <clears throat> Mikkel, open your eyes, Mikkel, come to me. Who the fuck is that? That looks like some kind of... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it does give me a good workout, but man, I don't want my arms to be hurting all the time, you know? <laughs> what? The white-haired girl? We made it last. What? Why is the white-haired girl here? Never mind that. Where am I? I was trying to get back to the mansion. How did I end up here? Do you know who I am? Of course I do. How could I not know who you are? Splendid. But what are you doing here? Why is there a sword in your hands? And why can I not speak? I was able to return to this gathering place of souls thanks to your efforts. Your uncovering of the truth of those events transpired so many years ago allowed me to remember everything I had forgotten. Oh, wow. Okay, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> to remember who I am. Remember who you are? You mean that you're a part of Morgana? Apologies. Breaking your soul here without any preparation has left you in a bit of a nebulous state. But my heart told me I had to do this now. Though you have no voice, I can feel your presence quite clearly. that it 
is cruel for me to ask this of you. For that, I deeply apologize. But I want it to be you who sends me off. Could you grant this girl her selfish request? That's not why I sought the truth. I wanted to see anyone extinguished, but because I wanted to set everyone free from the mansion's cursed bonds, because I wanted to put an end to this cycle of pain and suffering, because I wanted to save every last person caught in this tragic quagmire, that includes you. You're asking me to eradicate your soul? I must be destroyed. You can't tell me that after everything you've seen, you haven't realized that I have no place in their lives. While it's true, Morgana wished for misfortune to befall them. If I hadn't been there, none of their tragedies would have taken place. I swear, this visual novel makes it really hard to swallow this shit. <laughs> if I hadn't been there, the flaxen-haired girl would have been able to let go of her yearning for her brother. I don't know if I buy that. I don't think the white-haired girl made Nellie continue her yearning for Mel. I don't buy that at all. <clears throat> if I hadn't been there, the shipwrecked merchant's lover would not have lost her place as his tether. Okay, yeah, I, that I can accept. <laughs> I suppose. If I hadn't been there, the ambitious businessman would not have been betrayed by his close friend.
No, she's not making any sense. The question of what I am. The explanation might be a little lengthy, but I would like to share it with you before I depart. I was, as you ascertained, created by the goddess mind as it broke down in that tower. So that's probably what it was. While Morgana was basically losing her mind in the tower, she had this like split personality, and one of those personalities became the white haired girl. That's gotta be what happened. herself second, being forgiving, and then she severed that part of her soul. So that's why you always seemed so abnormally pure-hearted. I was no longer a part of Morgana, but something entirely separate. However, I wasn't me yet either. When you came to the mansion and resurrected Morgana, you resurrected me as well. But I had no self at first. I was, I suppose, not much different than the particles of dust floating around the mansion. But eventually, that dust gained a sense of self, taking form as a human soul, and descended into the realm of man and the fate which governs it. What do you think the first thing a new soul wishes for when it is born, Mikkel? to become one 
begins to turn against the laws of the universe. I wish to live. Morgana wished to curse the three men's souls. Though we sought after completely separate things, because we were once two parts of a whole, each of our wishes were shaped by the others. In order for an incomplete soul like mine to survive, it needs something to bind itself to the world. Sorry, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> something strong enough to prevent the universe from correcting the anomaly. And so the wish of that anomaly gave birth to yet another anomaly. A house that sat outside the currents of time. One that could descend into the mortal realm at various times and places. And it was that house that served as a tether for my soul. And you mean it wasn't Morgana's power that created the mansion, but your own wish? And why did it have to be that house that bound me to the that was where she lingered, the girl from which I was formed, which meant that my wish had the consequence of granting Morganas with it. The house, having attained perpetuity, served as a place for those reconstructed by Morgana's curse to return to. with her had another consequence. I was the one most affected by her wish. As much as I may have wanted to do good for them to be happy, my fate was dictated by her wish. In that position, Merely showing affection for anyone was damnable. Falling in love was an act of villainy. My very presence malevolent. Don't say that. I was the true witch. The true demon child. Stop talking, please. It should have never been possible for me to have a life at all. Please, stop. The universe must be returned to its proper state, Mikkel. Don't talk about yourself like that. I must be erased and Morgana's soul restored to its original form. But why? I do not belong here. I never belonged here. What's so wrong with wanting to live? The defect must be repaired. You're not a defect. Damn it. Why couldn't I be able to get a word in now at least? The restoration will not be instantaneous. It took many, many years for me to be formed. And it will take as long, if not longer, for the process to be reversed. But her soul 
will eventually return to its proper state. And perhaps, when her soul is restored, Morgana won't be a human. Perhaps she will be a butterfly resting upon the lip of a flower. Oh no, don't, don't do this, dude. Don't do that shit. I swear, Japanese do that shit all the fucking time to end their stories. They always come back as some fucking animal, some bird or some shit. <laughs> Don't do that here, please. I'm so tired of that ending. <laughs> Perhaps she will be that flower. Perhaps she will be the breeze in which that flower sways. But whatever form she takes, it will be her whole should take place. So please, take this sword and extinguish me. Put an end to this cycle of misery. I want you to be the one who does it. Please, There's only one choice here, so... You're asking too much of me. Yes, I want to save Morgana's soul. But do you really have to die for that to happen? Is there not some other way? I guess that, I guess that makes sense. You saw my death? Your actions that day appeared to me as the very definition of selfless and honorable. with Morgana's. 
You were both abused, imprisoned, called a witch. But while Morgana sought vengeance, you watched your own mother burn your crucified body. <coughs> and you wished for release rather than revenge. There's nothing honorable about that. I had just lost all hope for myself. I expect you'll disagree with me, say that it was a sign of your weakness, but that was not how I interpreted it. Self-sacrifice being one of the core characteristics Morgana gave to me, I was deeply moved. You didn't curse those who had wronged you in life. You chose your own destruction. <coughs> and I admired that strength of spirit. That admiration helped to shape my wish, to determine the form I would take, the name I would have. That's why Whenever I gained a physical body, it was modeled after yours, with snow-white hair and ruby-red eyes. Why my name was always Michelle, after the same angel from whom you took yours. I'm not... I'm in no way worthy of anyone's admiration. My admiration caused both you and the woman you love a great deal of pain. And for that, I apologize. But it also shows just how much I wanted to be like you. I would ask for you if you would be so kind to consider this a great favor for a starry-eyed little girl. A girl who quite literally idolized you to her very soul. Don't. I couldn't ask for a greater honor. How can you tell me that? Than to be erased from the world by you, my idol. And then ask me to kill you. Please, Mikkel. Be the one to set me off. No matter how many times you ask, I can't kill someone who's told me they wanted to live. I know what it's like to wish for life. I don't know if you've realized it yet, Mikkel, but this is the first time we've actually met. The story of the fourth door was Morgana's creation. Which means that, until now, we've never been in the same place while both aware of the other's presence. As far as you should be concerned, I'm a complete stranger. Yet still, you hesitate. I'm glad that you're reluctant You've shown me enough sympathy. I don't consider you a stranger at all. Indeed, this is the first time we've formally met, but I've watched you go through so much. I've seen you live three different lives. I've seen the impact you had on the people behind all three of those doors. 
are in no way a stranger. My erasure, Morgana's soul, will eventually become whole again. Her curse and the eternal cycle of agony it brings will be no more. When I am gone, everything will return to its rightful place. I implore you to not hesitate any longer. Are there really no other options? Is killing you really the only way to make things right? To release everyone from this curse? Delighted to have finally been able to meet you, the man after whom I modeled myself. <laughs> I know. I am incapable of taking my own life, Mikkel. God's teachings prohibit it, and as such, my identity as a saint prevents me from doing so. No, I don't want you to commit suicide. I want to find some way for you to live, to remain a part of this world. I know that by asking this of you, I am causing you great heartache, and for that, I offer you my sincerest apologies, but so long as I continue to exist in this world, Morgana can never truly have redemption. Tell me, who is it you've been fighting so hard to save? That doesn't mean doesn't mean that I... that I didn't want to save you, too. I believed I could save everyone summoned to the mansion. That no one would have to suffer anymore. That there would be no more tragedies. Mikkel, take the sword.
thank you, Mikkel, for having the strength to do what must be done. And I apologize for putting you in such a difficult position. Once my soul has been erased, I will be gone from this world forever. I will not return. Not in this or any other form. I feel no woe in that knowledge, though. I welcome my destruction with the utmost of joy. However, if it wouldn't be too much to ask for you to keep just a little bit of me, corner of your soul, Mikkel, to remember me, to remember the life I lived. That would make it all worthwhile. Thank you, Mikkel. You may very well be genuine. The whiteness surrounding me evaporates, and I find myself back in the observation tower. I can still feel my in my hand the impact of the sword piercing her breast. Damn it! Why? Why couldn't there have been some other way? Erasing a soul is not salvation! God damn it all! She deserved better. So much better than that! G no, now is not the time to grieve. There is work to be done. A girl to whom I must offer the chance for salvation. I mustn't cry over the white-haired girl's death now. There are things I need to take care of first. Morgana. Morgana stands there, staring off absently into the distance. After some time, she slowly turns to face me. What exactly was all that about? Come on, say something. Answer me. Morgana. How? It doesn't make any sense. He and the Lord. They couldn't. There were two different lords. The one at the estate, and the one who locked you in the tower. How? What was he doing there? That's not... I didn't... The man I was trying to curse was the Lord who threw the blood sabbats. How did I... Are you saying I remember wrong? That's ridiculous. I... I won't hear it. I won't have it for a second. We're in a very tenuous condition, Morgana. 
more than even you realize. You can't assume everything you saw in that state of mind to be true. Why? Just why? That only makes it that much worse. Why would he do that? How could he kill me? He said, he said he would show me the world. I cried for him. And he, he turns out to be the one pulling the strings? You saw what led to this. Say for himself. Misunderstandings that went unresolved, that should have been cleared up immediately. What he did was wrong, indefensible as far as I'm concerned. This all could have been avoided if he had told you everything. That said, Morgana, somewhat sympathize with how he felt then. You can sympathize with that monster? In what way? He loved you. Sincerely loved you. To be the target of such vitriol from a girl he cared so dearly about, to be mistaken for someone else entirely. I can understand how that would have hurt. It doesn't matter. That doesn't change anything. Like I said before you started all this, doesn't change anything. Does this revelation change what happened to me? Does it make me any less of a hate-filled witch? What does it matter if he had his reasons? What does it matter if he's not who I thought he was? It doesn't change the fact that I despise him with every fiber of my being. It's time to let go, Morgana. I met with the white-haired girl. I know her true nature. I cannot definitively say that you and the white-haired girl are one and the same. However, I can say with certainty that she was a part of you. A creation of your broken spirit. The fact remains that she was closer to you than anyone else, in every sense of the word. Can you see the situation you are in, Morgana? The terrible, tragic irony of it all? You've cursed yourself along with everyone else. brought ruin to a life of your own creation numerous times. You murdered yourself. It's time to let go, Morgana. There's only pain to be found in continuing down this road. Morgana, 
I take a step toward her, and she steps back, quietly maintaining our distance. I can almost hear trembling in her voice as she says, Stay back. You stay away from me. You have nothing to be afraid of, Morgana. I won't hurt you. I, I said, stay back, you. I, I bet you think this is hilarious. That I'm blind and a fool. Morgana. Yes, good on you, my dear. You've revealed my big secret. That I'm a feeble-minded little girl with a poor memory. You've uncovered the truth of my death. Discovered the white-haired girl's true identity. I always presumed she was you. How foolish of me. Laughing like I knew anything. Cursing the entirely wrong man. Absolutely brilliant, you might say. I made myself to quite the laughing stock. I'm not going to laugh about your pain, Morgana. I've come to realize that perhaps I empathized with you out of more than just our shared loneliness. We were both yoked with unimaginable misfortune. We lived our lives in lamentation of our fates. I understand your pain. That boat has long since sailed. You're right, it has. This is a realization I should have come to much sooner. Though you said it wouldn't have mattered, I still should have made an effort to get to know you in life. I feel guilty about how I constantly pushed you away. So, I'd like to make up for that now. I approach Morgana stretched out toward her. She stands there, bewildered, as I place them on her shoulders, pulling her in. Not for my own comfort, as I had so many times before, and not out of some pretend sense of pity for a sad pile of bones. I embrace her, all the pain and loneliness she holds inside. Her body gives off no warmth, and it's as weightless as the skeleton all those many years ago. She, like me, lost so much in life, but unlike me, she had no one there in her final moments. It's all right, Morgana. Everything's okay now. The tale behind the fourth door may have been a fabrication. But the Creator's soul is always somewhere to be found in her creations. Knowing the inseparable link between her and the white-haired girl. That's where I'll find what I'm looking for. I'm here for you. You're not
not alone, Morgana. We can end all this suffering together. It's going to be okay. What's wrong with you? Have you completely lost it? <coughs> do you, do I need to remind you of everything I've done? Of all the pain I've caused you? No reminders necessary. You did quite a number on me indeed. Then do you want to tell me how we went from that to you holding me? You didn't do what you did out of a particular grudge against me. Of that much, I was always certain. So I hold nothing against you. I bear no ill will. Nor, I'm certain, does Giselle. You're much too forgiving. I imagine there's something about having experienced the kind of pain we have that makes it hard to harbor any ill will toward one of our kind. Share trauma or not, you and that woman really are something. God, there are no words for how much you irritate me. The bite slowly drains from Morgana's voice. Quiet. I think I hear a muffled attempt to hold back a whimper. I pull away slightly, putting a hand under her chin and lifting her head. She quickly averts her eyes, but doesn't knock my hands away as I reach them into her hood, gently setting them against her cheeks. I run my fingers across the exposed flesh, then slowly pull back the hood, covering her face. Well, look at that. You're quite pretty without your face hidden. This, this, is the girl you were always meant to be. If Morgana had had a less harrowing life, this is probably what she would have looked like at 16. You know, you look a little like the white-haired girl. also wants a part of me. The last thing I want is to be like her in any way. And why is that? Because, because I never liked that girl at all. Always putting others before herself. Just watching her was aggravating. Although, in 
retrospect, she was everything about myself I deemed unnecessary. So that might explain why it was so hard to watch. Also, I was so sure she was you, which made it all the more frustrating. Why would her being me bother you so much? Because that, that wasn't you. You're aggressive. You yell. You fight. Is that how she saw me? How wouldn't it be bother me that you came back as a quiet, passive, subservient girl? Of course, now I know that it wasn't you, so... You were that sure it was me, despite thinking we were nothing alike? Apparently so. Hold on a second. Why would that bother you? I'll let you figure that one out. Uh... It's not important. So, you've got my attention. What are you planning to do now? To leave the mansion with you. To set everyone free and break the curse. Setting them free will set you free as well. So you souls. Exactly. Just so you know, I haven't forgiven them. My hatred isn't going to just vanish like it was nothing. I'll never be able to forgive them completely. But, you're right, this has gone on long enough, Morgana, I'm not even sure what I'm doing anymore, and it's all your fault. So sure, I'll release their souls. I'm so glad to hear it. However, I don't want to see them alone. I'm not sure I'll be able to set them free if I have to face them on my own. That won't be a problem. I'll go with you. We'll go see them together. And you get to be my guide this time, then. Get to take up Giselle's old mantle. That I do. Even if it means taking this hand? You honestly think I have any reservations about that? God, I swear... You really are the worst. Lead the way, my dear. To where their souls wait.
Alright, I am stopping here. Alright, thanks for joining. I will be back tomorrow with Persona 5 Strikers. Good night.